morning, welcome to the Israel First television program from our studios in Jerusalem. Great to have you with us. Welcome to the, the Holy City, to the Holy Land, and uh, welcome to what's going to happen in the last days. You know, this is the place where everything will take off, everything will come to a head. And we're here on the ground to help you to understand what's happening in Israel, because Israel is first, because what happens in Israel affects the rest of the world. And um, we are still, as we've come into the studio, Natalie, we're still involved with the, the Gaza war. So this is another Gaza war update, albeit that it is at a lower stage than it was at the beginning. Um, now, um, one of the things that has happened is that they have had to move people from the south, from the north, uh, to different parts of the country. We've talked about this before. Uh, the evacuees, the Israeli evacuees. Half a million. Right. And um, the numbers suddenly changed, by the way, uh, after the uh, people were moved. Suddenly it diminished. Um, so all these people have been moved and uh, we're coming up to the six-month anniversary since they've all moved. Now, the Jerusalem Post has recently published a report on the on a survey that's been done which has shown there's a deterioration of the psychological well-being of the evacuees which is quite normal because um, many of them didn't believe that they were leaving for very long so one person i read about said they left the keys under the mat in other words they expected to be going back very quickly now it's six months not six days not six hours, not six days, not six weeks, but now we're coming up to six months that they've been away from their homes. Now, many were forced out of their homes. They had no choice. The army evacuated them and took them on buses from their communities. Um, and what we are, what's been happening is that it's led to the uh, tight living conditions because suddenly they are living in hotels or very small apartments uh, and it's also led to the destruction of kibbutz life. Many of the people who were moved were from kibbutzim which is where the communi their communities and they exist because they're communities they are dependent on one another. Now Dr Aaron Rothman he's the head of Maccabi's health division said the deterioration in the physical and mental health of the evacuees is evident and as Natalie said, more than a half a million Israelis have been evacuated from the north and the south following the events on October the 7th. But the, the question is, what were the plans and criteria for evacuation? Was the evacuation done in accordance with the wishes of the people? The lengthy absence of the residents from their communities, their homes, their daily routine uh, has negatively affected their personal and communi community functioning and resilience. Their, this impact is particularly acute as there is, are no signs of return on the horizon. Evacuees are being housed in hotels, guest houses in different places across co the country. There have been consistent reports of severe mental stress amongst the displaced families. For example, in the Eshkol Regional Council based on a local survey, about 40% of the families who were evacuated from the same communities have been separated. So, there's the stress of being moved away from your no, community. All your nets, all your nets is yeah, destroyed. Yeah, the neighbours that family, you, family, family neighbours, friends. You're like in an artificial place mm -hmm. where it's not your home. Then after you don't have your neighbours, then you don't have your community. Right. So all the net, the social net is totally disturbed. So is and it is not just that. If they knew that it was just for a certain time, you cope. But when you don't know for how long it's going to be, is adding a stress in the family life, in the community life, and in your daily life. So uh, you know another another aspect of these communities being forcibly removed was the employment, people's jobs now. Many of them have been moved far away from their place where they were working. So it's caused a financial strain. Furthermore, some displaced youngsters, the young people, are struggling to keep up their school routine. They've been, their schools were suddenly closed down and consequently are engaging in negative behaviour. 
The displaced people are transparent victims because whilst they look okay, they are victims of the, uh, of the war. In hotels across the country, a significant number of people, predominantly from the south and the north, continue to reside. Many of them trans across the hotel lobbies unaware of what the future holds or how long the displacement will last. Yeah. A third of the wards evacuees reported a change in their health condition for the worse. And there was a 35% increase in the use of medications. We've spoken before about sleeping tablets. The epidemic in is run of sleeping tablets. Um, they've had the medications to treat depression and anxiety. About two thirds of the evacuees testified that their sleep was disturbed. And a third of the parents said there was a change of the worse for their children's eating habits. Everything is affected. Maccabi Health Services, the second largest health fund, surveyed its members to find out how being away from home and having lost their, some of them lost their homes completely, has affected their well-being. This uh, survey was carried out in February 2024. Um, so, you know, we're seeing a, a, a serious uh, amount of health problems, mental problems. According to the survey, about 38% said their mental state was worse, almost three times. Their psychological condition before the war, about a third of the evacuees reported that they uh, are bothered by emotional problems all the time or often. In addition, 45% of the evacuees felt that they need psychological help from a professional. Fully 70% of those requested such help and are currently being treated. But 22% feel they need assistance but have not been able, have not uh, received it. Since the outbreak of the war, there has been a 45% increase in evacuees who testify they are taking medication to treat depression. Also among evacuees, those who perform physical activity before the war, about half said that they exercised less and about a fifth said they stopped completely. Among the smokers or ex-smokers, 43% reported that following the war they've started or increased the frequency of smoking. So the stress level has gone off the, off the Richter scale and um, so there's a, this is happening to the people who were moved uh, after the 7th of October from the north and the south. And, and it's affecting, is affecting society. Because right. when you're seeing about half a million, we are about 8 million, 9, 9 million. But if you don't count the, the Muslim, it will be like 7 million about. So it's a big, it's a big proportion. And when it's like that, they have some other members of the family who can hear what they are saying, who are not evacuees, but who are, who, who are families. And they are affected also. So it's like all, you know, which is what we say also in the Bible. When one part of the member is affected, all the body is affected. And we can see that totally in Israel. And, and it's affecting everybody. I would say even us who are affected by what's happening here. Um, yeah, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very serious problem and it's something you need to be aware of that's happening in Israel. That's not covered in the media, you know, it's not no. something that um, many international media outlets will tell you about, but it's, it, no. is, it is something very traumatic for the nation. Um, and particularly, bearing in mind it's six months, you know, it's, uh, it's a long time for people to be away from their communities, homes, schools, etc. Now, and when you, when you say that, I'm um, like, I was pondering, do I tell the story? But I think it's important because you have to see the reality here. We read a lot, I read a lot of stories, and there is many soldiers or people who were in during the attack of the 7 October have been maimed and they've been amputated. And I hear all the story that I hear is like, look how they are heroes and they are carry on their lives and they want to. And yes, this is amazing. But you know what? I have a shoulder who is really hurting right now, like this inflammation happens. And, and I can feel the pain and I know how, I know it's going to stop, but I'm thinking about them losing their, their members, their legs usually, uh, some, sometimes arms. It's like, you know that it's not going to 
um, grow again, except obviously if there is a miracle from God. But you have to see, like, we hear only hero stories, but the heroes, when they are behind the closed door, don't tell me that they are all happy all the time. And, and I know the pain. And it's like when you have, when you have a member who has been cut, you still have they say phantom or ghost mm -hmm. phantom mm -hmm. phantom um, uh, pain, phantom pain. pain. That's it. And so I know the reality of the thing. And if I read only stories of look at these heroes, look at these heroes, this is not the reality. Yes, people are resilient. But I want to pick that also this story because I'm reading a book with Martin. I think we spoke about it last time. It's called The Last Slave and it's all about redemption during the time of Egypt. And, and I didn't realize, but reading this book, they show also how many people were men because they were building buildings with the bricks and they were falling, the, the, the building were falling and a lot of people were men. And so when they were redeemed, a lot of them lost their members. And so this was a terrible thing. The amazing thing is when they received Torah, which was a few weeks after at Sinai, God said, I can't give my Torah to my people who are men. And if you re remember, I don't remember the psalm. I have to find the place. But there is a psalm where he said, all were healed on the way. And this is what God has said. God has said, I can't give my Torah back to my people. I mean, give my, my Torah to them. And they are in, in bad shape and they are suffering. So I need to heal them before giving my Torah. So this is where we are at. You have to see the reality of what's happening here in Israel. There is a deep suffering. I know you hear about the other side of the Palestinians. And this is all the other side of the other um, I would say medias, and yes, there is things also happening, but right now we're speaking about what's happening here in Israel because it is not said, and you need to know, and a lot of people are suffering. There is a lot of people who are men. There is a lot of people who have to stay in the hospital, go to rehabilitation hospitals, and, and we are in the pangs of the redemption and Israel is suffering deeply. Yeah, and of course it affects uh, the whole family if someone is injured and, and seriously injured and has to have rehabilitation. Um, so then it affects the family and then that affects the society. So it's, uh, it's very, very serious what's happening. And this is something you won't hear in the mainstream media now. There's a, something else you won't hear in the mainstream media is a film that's coming out um, called The End of Humanity as Planned by the Global Leaders. We've talked about this as well before, but uh, that the globe, you need to look at the full picture of what's happening in the world, the, the, the globalists and the Freemasonry, etc. And what's happening with the one world governments and the World Economic Forum and... Um, David Sorensen is doing a film, it's his latest film, it's giving a stark warning, he says, regarding the global elite's use of robot cyborgs and artificial intelligence. I guess, if anything, out of those three that I would highlight is artificial intelligence. I've spoken about it before, but it's something that is very, very serious, which is being used more and more. You just talk to young people who are working in the marketplace about AI and its use. Now, David Sorensen is a journalist and has been uh, a White House aide under uh, President Donald Trump's presidency. He's the founder of the organization Stop World Control. He says, do you know there is an official agenda to replace the human race with robots, cyborgs and AI? This agenda is heavily, by the way, it's part of the whole story, it's part of the jigsaw of the end times, promoted by the World Economic Forum, who we've mentioned before, the infamous World Economic Forum. They aim to end the era of humanity and usher in a new era of near humanity. We've, we've spoken about this, but it's very important for you to know that there is an agenda 
for population control or population reduction. Um, this is something that they are Which doing. Which is happening for right. the first time for two decades. Now there is, uh, the mortality is higher than it ever been. Um, and uh, there's a mix, they, they want to mix humans and machines or computers, I should be more specific. They uh, want to have our thoughts and emotions monitored by AI uh, in order to combat climate change. I'm not sure how the climate is going to be affected by our thoughts, but anyway, that's what they want. Um, David goes on to say, we're soon releasing this groundbreaking film. Most of us have seen science fiction movies about robots taking over the world and eradicating humanity, but we don't know that this is exactly what is being prepared by the global leaders. It's certainly something that's happening on a global scale is the use of robots, uh, particularly yes. in the workplace, companies like Amazon and Tesla and other companies with ro robots, they're becoming more and more used. Now, you could say, Martin, well, they are, it's good for them to, you know, to do manual jobs. Yeah, but you have to remember, and these are jobs that were done by humans, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be done better. Now, and not only that, it's like I was reading today a news and in Japan, they used some robots and they were uh, fighting each other. And one was put on the side, but he re reconstructed himself. And, and these robots killed 29 humans in the lab. It was in Japan. So we can it's see a military, the reality. It was a military yes. robot. Yes. It, should point out. Not yes. A, yes, of course. It wasn't that, in Amazon. <laughs> it wasn't one that packs no. boxes for you for no. Amazon. But but to, to show to show that now and somebody, Elon Musk, that is quite also a shady person, was saying how it is dangerous to use robots because he knows that they can change things themselves at a certain level and we can see it happening. So it's, it's just... Uh, it's all part of the, the last days yes. before the redemption that we're having all these things. Now, I know that you've been preparing, Natalie, and you've it's, got some things. Which is, which is exactly, I mean, I didn't know that it was so relevant, but it, it is so relevant because what I wanted to share with you is the so is. You need to see when you read the word, you have two names, <clears throat> I mean many names, but you have two main names for God, which is in Hebrew Elohim, and you have the other one, which would be Yud and Bav, Yud, wait, Yud, Bav, is the holy name, which we say like people will say Yahweh, and it's four names. Is four letters in Hebrew. Suddenly, I have a blank about it because I don't want. I don't want the Jewish people don't say the name. So I'm trying to put a thing in the middle, and so now I can't. I can't say the name. Anyway, is the name that you will find in your Bible, where in English you will find written in capital letter the Lord. Okay, all the letters will be in capital letter, and when you see Elohim, it will be God with a capital letter at the beginning, but it would be written God like we see it usually written, okay? But the, th the thing is, is very important because when you start to read also, especially in cre during the creation in Genesis, right at the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is Elohim. Because there is two, you can see two faces of God in his one. But when you say Elohim is the strict justice side of God. So he's the one who created the heaven and the earth with the law of nature, with gravity, you know, with all the things who are not changing. Now, if he wants to change it, like the sun has stopped for Joshua, God will do something. But usually the sun will rise and go down. The moon will do the same. You know, there is like all... And it's just amazing to see all this world going in an amazing way. And if we start to think, 
And I remember when I was a little girl, I was singing, okay, there is this and this and that. And so there is the earth and there is the universe. Okay, we need to have a God. It's impossible that everything is working so perfectly together. The seasons coming around and all of that. And it's like, okay, there is a God. So this is the God which is be called Elohim. And it will be written God in English. And the other one, this is just so exciting, is when you start to see in Genesis 2 and the verse, um, I will look at it, uh, is Genesis 2, 4. When God starts, and it's a passage when God starts to speak about Adam and Eve, which is Adam and Chava in, in uh, Hebrew. And then the name change is Yehovah or yud he vav he this is the name that we say. And the, it's, a ho, it's his holy name, it's like his covenant name, is the side of mercy, chachamim in English, uh, sorry, in Hebrew, which is mercy, which comes from rechem, which is the womb. So it's like the side, God knew that when he was created, Adam and Eve and humanity, he couldn't just be Elohim, because we will be pulverized, pulverized, pulverized mm -hmm. in in million pieces. Because strict justice, we know that we are sinners. We know that we are doing things wrong, and he's trying to bring us back on the side, on the right side. And so he used always Yehovah, Yahweh, uh, to be. You know, there is different name. The name that we see also will be Adonai, okay? And this is what, when it's written, the Lord in capital letters. So when you read in the Psalms, in all the new, in the, in the five books of Moses, in the Psalm, yeah, in the five, the five books of David, by the way, is David who wrote most of the Psalm, of the Psalms, you can see the name Elohim and you can see the name Adonai or Hashem, also the, the Jewish people we say, for respect of his name. And so you can see when God is acting as strict justice and when God is as, as, uh, acting with Chachamim, with mercy. And we can see when you read your Bible, it's just making you more aware of how God is acting. And sometimes, but it's always always God and is always with the goal that we, he wants the best for us. He wants to bring the best in us. And sometimes as a, as a father, he's disciplining, disciplining us, but it's for the good of us. And so sometimes it will be Elohim working in our life because he say, I want to put you back on the path. And then when you are back on the path, he's like, oh my gosh, this is so important. It was hard, it was tough, but we, I can see now the benefit of all the things that God has done in my life. So this is what I wanted to share today. Yeah, and um, you know, it's interesting because <clears throat> the role of AI, of robots we were talking about, of um, cyborgs, etc., uh, is coming up and coming up and is pushing people that they have to pray, they have to trust God, they have to read the Bible because there's no choice now. There isn't any. We're getting to a stage in the world where uh, the darkness has uh, emerged. Uh, you have to make a choice. And yeah, people, yeah. you know, there isn't any any uh, room for manoeuvre anymore. You know, people have to call out to God for salvation. And the same in Israel, with the, the, the only solution to everything that's happening, uh, particularly behind the scenes, uh, which is not covered by the media, particularly the things that are done in secret by the globalists and the one world government. Our own, the only way to combat that is through through prayer. So, you know, people are, are being fought, you know, it's like um, the birth pangs, the, the baby's coming and the contractions are getting tighter and the pain is growing because we're we're getting ready for the return of Mashiach and this is going to be the place, Jerusalem is going to be the place where he comes back. And it would be amazing, and it would be amazing, so it's what we have to keep hope uh, with all this. Well, so it's like when the, the mother is going through the birth 
pain that she's looking for the baby, but it's difficult when you're in a lot of pain, Natalie, to always see the 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 end result. When the baby comes, you forget everything, but, but you have to go through the birth pangs to get there. So it's been great to be with you. Thank you so much uh, again for joining us across the world. Please let us know where you're watching. That'd be great. We, Natalie and I would very much appreciate that. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for those who've been writing to us and telling us uh, how Israel First has helped them. We we appreciate that very much. It's, it's very touching. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, please do let us know wherever you're watching. Uh, write to us. All the information, there's a, an address, an email address, physical address is all on the website, which is www.israelfirst.org. Thank you so much to everybody who is financially supporting us. That means so much to us. It enables us to do these programs, to come and tell you what's really happening in Israel behind the scenes and uh, to enable you to pray, for example, for the evacuees. Um, and, um, uh, you know, you can uh, contact us, you can get in touch with us and let us know your story as well. We'd really appreciate that as well, how the things are happening where you're living, how the, you know, these end time things are affecting you. Uh, look at the website. It's uh, www.israelfirst.org. The donate page has all the information to help us. And remember, we're the program that looks at the land, the people and the language.